One, three, two, one. Okay, you know what? Hey guys, MegaMat1254 here again. Welcome back to another live stream. I'm joined here by my good friends Wasteland World Official and Dan's Reviews. What's up, guys? And, uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about Here's Negan, which is the best episode of Season 10, in my opinion. And, yeah, I do want to go over, like, what I liked, what I didn't like, you know, like, just generally what I thought about the episode. So, yeah, guys, uh, I'll just go over, I guess, what I liked first. So, what I liked, basically the whole episode, it was freaking amazing. Uh, if I had any flaws, I honestly just don't really have any. Uh, I don't see anything that hurts the episode, personally. And, uh, well, in my opinion, anyway, it's a flawless episode. I think there's no problems with this. It is very well done, very well made. The music is very well done, and even, like, the acting from JDM in this episode, like, it's easily his, uh, best performance as Negan. There's just no doubt in my mind about that, that this is the best Negan performance in the history of the show. And, uh, Hillary Burton Morgan also does a really good job as Lucille. I think that, uh, she also pulls a really good performance that actually matches JDM's, too. So, like, yeah, the acting is all very well done, and, uh, we have small cameos in this episode, like, uh, Laura is in this episode, but it's, like, she's barely in it, though. It's, like, very minor cameo, which I thought she would have had more of a role, if you ask me, but, uh, I'm not gonna sit here and act like it, it hurts the episode or anything, which it doesn't, so, I'm not gonna complain about that. And we meet some new characters, too. And they're kind of like, whatever characters, they're not really meant to be big, like, we meet this new guy known as Franklin, but like, I'm just gonna say it guys, I don't think that he is going to be like, a big character, I don't think they're ever, we're gonna, I don't think we're ever gonna see him again, that's all I'm gonna say, like, do you guys think we're ever gonna see Franklin again, or no? I don't care, honestly, I, I just don't care. No. I was gonna say, it doesn't really matter too much, because it's like, do you, does he ever, like, is he ever involved in any of the other further savior stuff? No. To me, that means he doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah, I, I can see it now. I could legit see it now. Uh, George Drake saying, um, Franklin is Pope confirmed. Oh, uh, Lord. Or being like, oh, Franklin is the Commonwealth leader or some stuff. Franklin is the true dad of Dwayne. Oh, man. And, uh, obviously, the other new characters we meet this episode are all dead, which is the, uh, Viper MC or whatever. And that that's actually the best part of the episode I'm about to get to, is, uh, Negan straight up goes in there, goes in that bar, and he just, he just destroys that whole gang. Like, he viciously murders them all. And it's almost reminiscent, kind of, of when Rick attacks the satellite outpost. Except Negan does it all by himself. He goes in there, he bludgeons them all with Lucille, puts the leader on his knees, gives a grand speech, and then smashes his head in. And that gave me chills, guys. is because it's like the birth of evil Negan, and you even get his theme again in this episode, which is really awesome to hear, because Negan's villain theme is just really creepy, and like, in my opinion... It is one of my favorite Walking Dead pieces of music, too, so it was nice to have a callback to that. And, uh, another really good scene from this episode is, uh, the freaking Rick Grimes freaking flashback, dude. Like, actually seeing Rick again, I don't know what it is about, like, seeing Rick, but, like, whenever you see him past 905, you just get chills. Like, you just see him, you're like, oh shit, man, that's, like, Rick right there. That's the legendary, that's the legend himself. I know. <clears throat> you see it, it's just like, oh, man. Like, you could tell even Negan's kind of getting, like, chills just remembering that and, like, seeing the tree and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Go ahead. I was gonna say, like, it brings back a lot of, like, you can tell the thoughts are just rushing through Negan's head because it's like he sees the tree, he hears Rick's voice, he thinks about when he slit his throat, and you can tell he's just like, oh, man. It would have been really cool, like, to get a piece of dialogue. I don't know how they could have worded it, but, like, I just, 
I really want to know if Negan believes Rick's dead or not. Well, yeah, because let's just remember that Negan wasn't even there when uh, Rick got blown up on the bridge, so like. Negan wouldn't know like what happened. He probably would have heard, but he wouldn't. He didn't see it for himself. He didn't see that event go down. Nope. Yeah. <clears throat> so other things awesome. I like from this episode: freaking <laughs> Negan playing video games was awesome. It's funny because like you see like this scary guy who like kills people in the apocalypse, then you go back in the past and he's just sitting there trash talking kids on Xbox Live. It's like it just shows how much the apocalypse like changes people, and like that even the most evil like people were once like you know they weren't bad at all. They were just normal folks living normal lives. Like Negan was just a gym teacher that played video games before the apocalypse. And you see how much, like, that changes him and stuff. And I think it's a great way to show how, like, the damage the apocalypse does. Because, um, with Lucille, right? When you find out she has cancer and all that, you find out that it's easily curable and that she will survive. But the apocalypse comes in and that's what kills her, not the cancer. It's the apocalypse taking away the uh, medical necessities. And it just shows, like, how much the apocalypse just destroys lives and, like, how it messes everything up. Like, what are you guys' thoughts on that in general? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that, um, the, yeah, like, the way they display how the apocalypse can change people is phenomenal. Especially, like, you know, like, with, um, well, I mean, Lucille's suicide and stuff. That, like, that changed her and stuff. And uh, like all that is to thanks due to this uh, pandemic and stuff that happened and went on. And uh, yeah, I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. I think it's uh, to be honest, like it's kind of funny when you watch this episode because they literally go through like all of these different vegans. Like the first vegan is like this guy that's just like this like good teacher that's like a really terrible husband that's cheating on uh, his wife. And then the second Negan is like the evil Negan when he like, you know, kills the uh, biker group and stuff like that. And then the third Negan is like the current time Negan. And it's the one, it's the Negan that's like trying to make things right. So it's like, I don't know, it's kind of cool that we basically have three different Negans. Well, yeah, you get, like, all three, like, arcs of his character thrown into one. And how they didn't make that feel rushed or, like, weird, honestly... I just have to applaud the writers for that, like, they showed three different timelines of Negan, and it all flowed together, like, perfectly, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Yep, it was fantastic, the way they pulled that off. Yeah, and uh, another thing from this episode that was really great was, uh, basically, it was that final scene, right, where you have the stare down between Maggie and Negan, and you just know that in season 11, shit is going to go down. Like, you know that yep. something is going to happen between those two, and it's going to be insane. Yep. yep agreed. Yeah. And I like how uh, they basically confirmed that uh, Father Gabriel didn't die at the water tower at all. Like, they're like, oh yeah, Gabriel's back, said you could stay, whatever. And I'm just like, well, yeah, uh, there's for all the people that were worried about Gabriel, he's fine. T Exactly. And as I've been telling y'all, like, basically since we saw that darn episode, it's like, nah, oh, man, he's gonna be back, and we're just gonna have this line of, like, and I, I don't even think at this point we're gonna get that, honestly, because, like, they already said that Gabriel's back, but, like, they'll probably just be like, ah, well, we didn't find too much food, but, ah, we got what we got, and then they'll just never mention anything from that episode again. Exactly. Hey, Matt, how you doing today, bro? Pretty good epic. How about yourself? This episode was awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah, this episode was a masterpiece, in my opinion, Epic. It's, uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, it's definitely my favorite episode from Season 10. And I'm going to take it a step further and say it's my favorite episode since Rick's been gone. It doesn't beat what comes after, but it's my favorite from Season 9 and 10, excluding what comes after. I agree with that, honestly. Same. Like, I don't know, there's something about this episode... That, like, it's actually, like, I don't know, it's just cool, like, seeing this, like, evil, like, dictator leader. Like, he's a broken man. And it's kind of, like, it's so cool to just kind of see this guy before the apocalypse just kind of living this normal life. 
you know, like, gym teacher, you know, he had a wife, the, uh, you know, he played video games and stuff, you know, he had a pretty normal life, and then you just see, like, how that all crumbles in front of him, and you legit see his mental sanity collapse throughout the episode, which I thought was really cool, that you legit see Negan get broken down, but then you see him get built back up, but he's back a different man. It's like the season 10 rendition of, like, what comes after, pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, I think this episode, like, honestly, like Matt just said, it's probably the best episode, easily the best of season 10, and one of the best in the series. I will say, though, as much as I love it, I think, like, Rick's last episode just, it, it doesn't compare to it still, just for me personally, but it, it's really good. Like, it's close. <laughs> Would you guys consider Here's Negan a top 10 episode? Me personally? Yeah, yeah. I do. I would. Somewhere, uh, I'd say it would be somewhere around like your number 4, 5, 6 or something. Oh yeah, I agree. I mean, myself, I, uh, I think it is a top 10. I still think there are better episodes than it, but like, not by much. Like... It would probably be, like, my number seven or something. Which is, uh, yeah. I mean, to even make it on the top ten Walking Dead episodes list for, like, a lot of people like us, it's like, that just shows you how good an episode is because, like, I mean, The Walking Dead has over, like, I believe, we're over 150 plus at this point, right, episodes? So, yeah, to get in that top ten, like... It's a very slim chance, but, like, that just shows how good Here's Negan is. And to think that this is just meant to be a bonus episode. Yeah. I know. And to add also to that, too, uh, because episode 19 was the 150th episode, so this episode, it would be the 153rd episode. Wow. 153rd, wow. I mean, People to believe, even like, we're think... almost, like, like, almost, like, over, like, the midway point for like the 100 you know era oh, man. well we are we are over the 100 point it's gonna be like the uh the comics where it's like we're get we got so close to 200 but we just didn't quite get there yep hey matt can i join um i would epic but it's like we have, like, very limited guests on the streams just to, like, keep the, uh, you know, like, the, s I don't know, we just keep our guests very limited on the streams, like, we don't like to have, like, too many people. Maybe next stream, though, yeah. Okay, uh, give me one second here, guys, I'm just doing some. Uh -huh. Um, okay, uh, is there any flaws you guys had with the episode, or like anything you didn't like about it? Because me personally, I don't have any flaws. I don't either. Uh, it's not a flaw, but I'm not. You know what? Yeah, it's not a flaw. It's just I guess something worth mentioning, which isn't even the show's fault. So that's why I'm not flying it. Is that I remember originally, and I heard this today actually, ironically, is that they wanted Austin Emilio to come back, but they and literally the Laura like part of the episode is supposed to be Dwight from what I've heard and I'm just like oh man can you imagine though if that would have been Dwight instead yeah. okay if that was Dwight um in my opinion uh that role that Laura had would have been a lot bigger I feel like Dwight would have helped Negan take those biker guys down and you would have seen like that and you kind of would have seen them have this kind of like awkward friendship at first I feel like yeah Kind of like what you see in the, uh, comic book. Uh -huh. But, yeah, you know what? Dwight not being here, I'm not gonna sit here and pout about it. Because what we still got for an episode, honestly, it's still a very good episode. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna take a point off because Dwight's not here. That's not the show's fault. That is honestly more the state of the world in general and, uh... Well, uh, the, the fear filming schedule, because they needed Austin Emilio for uh, fear filming. But in the same token, I would say, like, honestly, just let him leave fear for a bit. And, like, just don't have Dwight in a lot of fear or some I don't know. And just get him on here as Negan, because honestly, Dwight has such a meaningful role in Negan's story that I would have preferred to see him on Here's Negan than on uh, just a random frickin' fear episode you know what i'm saying yeah well i mean the other problem with it is is that it's like well also think about this 
like season uh, six B of Fear, from what we've heard, has a lot of bottle episodes that probably don't even include White. So it's like, man, you had a golden opportunity there somewhere. I feel like. Exactly. I just feel like Dwight being there would have been awesome, but in the same token, I'm not going to sit here and get upset about it, because I'm going to be honest, it's not it's not a big deal. No. Nope. But yeah, Laura being around, it, it, it was cool, I guess, but in the same token, it's just like, what did she it's do? It's good enough. It's good enough. Yeah. It's decent. I mean, um, uh, we're... we're... I mean, well, we gotta be. Uh, I mean, we gotta be honest here. We're, we're lucky to get any other saviors, honestly. You know. Yeah. They could have just said like, they could have just tossed the rag and said like, ah, no saviors. Uh, just, but they they brought in somebody, so we, we gotta give them credit for that. Exactly. I agree. Well, that's what kind of annoys me though, is that like we got that, and everyone's more or less just focused about this Franklin dude. Uh. It's like, man, why wouldn't you focus on the fact they brought Laura back? I'm just saying, dude, I'm a lot more hyped about Laura than I am about this random Franklin guy. But who even is Franklin? Like, all we know is that he's Laura's adoptive father, and he wouldn't have left Laura with the saviors in the state the saviors were in, where they were just a bunch of evil, like, people that killed people and took their stuff. I feel like Franklin would have, you know, Franklin would have been there. He wouldn't have left her. So, Franklin's dead. I hate to say it for all you, like, Franklin fans that think he's alive, but, uh, yeah, Franklin is dead. You know what? Uh, yeah, actually, do that. Like, leave it in the comment section or, like, on the live chat. Like, what you, what do you think happened to Franklin? In your own fan theory um, headspace, what would you want happened to Franklin, and where do you think he died, or how he died, or what? Yeah, like, if you guys were to, like, you know, like, what do you guys think? If you think Franklin's alive, the theory's always welcome, of course, but, you know, me personally, I'm just not a, uh, believer of that theory. No. I hate to burst the bubble here, but I'm sorry, somebody has to, uh, I don't really care if he's, like, well, I mean, in my opinion, he's dead, but, it, like, I'm just saying, I don't really understand what all the hype is about. He's just there to serve the plot for this episode. He's not a character that we're supposed to see later on, in my opinion. Yeah. No. Epic I says, do. yeah, he's got to be dead. Agreed, Epic. Yeah. Franklin is more than likely dead. I'll give him a 95% chance being dead, and a 5% chance being that he left the group, and we're just not going to see him again. People think that he's going to be on the wall of the laws. So I'm like, give me a break. But what point does he serve? Laura's dead. What who, What character does Franklin serve at that point? Negan? But Negan barely knew Franklin. And I'm going to be honest, Franklin probably died in the early days of forming the Saviors, if you want my opinion. Probably. Not to mention the other group of doctors. Because I know there were just some throwaway characters there that weren't even relevant. They're like standing on an RV with a sniper or something. Just random characters that don't matter, so yeah. They're just whatever characters, personally. The whole point of Franklin is just for the Laura cameo, so yeah. It, like, didn't they say something too in the, in the um, episode that there's another group, I mean, besides the Vipers, of course, that um, guards, like, the roads at night, some of them? So maybe that was, like, some other, like, watch that's, on saviors. In my opinion, maybe that's the original kind of, like, where Negan got the idea for the saviors, like, he sees exactly. this group that is, like, guarding the roads at night, and who does that remind you of? Reminds you of the saviors from Last Day on Earth. Yep. Hey, Rowdy, welcome to the stream. Here's Negan, was one of the best of the show. Oh, yeah, we all agree with that. Um, here's Negan, was a masterpiece, in my opinion. As uh, we've yeah. been talking about it for the past 20 minutes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, personally, none of us, from what I know, like, have any issues with it. I know. I just, you know. Uh, there's one issue I have with it, actually. Just one. Just one. What is it? Um, it's that, like, like, okay. Basically, my, my biggest issue is that, um... The biggest issue, honestly, is that I have no issue. Ha, <laughs> yeah. Which isn't even an issue, really. It's just, like, that's how good, like, here's Negan is. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking around. But, yeah. Um, hey, Matt, to me, SpongeBob isn't an icon. He's a legend. Oh, yeah, he is for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Here's Negan is close to perfect. In my opinion, it's a perfect it episode. Perfect. I don't really have any problems with it. But um, if you have any flaws, I'd actually love to hear, like, what you think could have been better or kind of like, you know, like what you didn't like about it. Yeah, it's a 10 out yep. of 10 for me. Here's Negan destroys the door. Uh, it does more than do that. It, it, it pummels the door, rips it apart, rips the door off the wall, and uh, rips that frickin' door in half. Yep. yep. I was gonna say, knocks the door down and just, yep. You know that shot of Negan kicking the door down when he leaves his burning house? That's frickin', that's what that is right there. It's, that's the fear yep. being kicked right down and pummeled. I love it. Man, not to add to, like, I'm just gonna add to, I think this scene, I don't know what it was, I don't even know what it is, like, what it is with this moment, but, like, just this scene, when you have the guy that shoots the door a couple times, and then you've got the glass just, like, you know, breaks and stuff, and you got Negan that walks in in the shadows, and that music picks up, I don't know why. I got this it's moment. dark, I love it. Yeah. I can't I really hear Dan. You can't hear Dan. Um, yo, uh, Dan, can you check and see if your voice is on a uh, party share, just in your settings on your app? Yeah. Because if it's not on party share, no one will be able to hear you. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna skip that episode of Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, it's um, yeah, it, skip it if you want. Um. If you know what happens, I'd say skip it, but if you don't know, then just watch it, because you're going to be really confused because uh, of the major scene. By the way, guys, yeah, please don't discuss Fear 608 spoilers. I don't want to ruin it for any viewers who haven't seen the episode yet. So, yeah, like, I don't really want to talk about Fear too much tonight. kind of want to keep the topic on Here's Negan. Just because of, uh, you know, spoilers, and I don't want to ruin it for people. Well, yeah, because a lot of people don't have plus, right? So, don't want to ruin it for folks. At first, I thought the door, like, I thought, like, it, like, I thought it, was, like, was a tie-in for, like, Grace and stuff, because she was, like, behind the door. You know? Like, I know what happens, but I'm not spoiling it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, sorry. Oh, there's nothing to be sorry for, Rowdy. Sorry for what? Um, yeah. <laughs> Alright, it's all good, man. <laughs> um... Freaking, uh, okay, so like I was saying before, uh, we were talking about fear. Um, like, if there's any flaws you have with Here's Negan, or, like, anything that you don't like about it, like, just let me know. Because, uh, well, the three of us here don't have any issues with it. But it would actually be interesting to hear, like, if someone, like, had an issue with it, like, kind of, like, what the flaw would be. Just because, me personally, I don't see any flaws with the episode. Because I honestly think it's damn, it's damn well perfect. Like, I know some people were kind of confused about the kind of the time jumps they did in this episode and stuff like that. I, to be honest, I personally didn't really have that, like, hard of a time following it because you got to look at it from this perspective. Like, you kind of have to ignore the present timeline for a bit and focus on the past. And then once you do that, you're good. Exactly. Here's Negan is art. Oh, definitely agreed. It's it's a perfect episode. Everything is perfect. JDM and Hillary Burton were fantastic. Oh yeah, they uh those two, man. It kind of sucks that we're never going to see Hillary Burton on The Walking Dead again just cuz she really pulled a real good performance for one episode. Mm -hmm. My favorite moment was when Negan was creating Lucille with the song in the background. Oh, yeah, when he's putting the barbed wire on the bat. Yeah, that was a great freaking scene. You know what I think what was really awesome to me, right? Um, yeah. I thought, like, you know, like, about midway through the episode with the Lucille and Negan stuff, I legit forgot that it was that it was even Negan stuff that was... That you know was in this. For some reason, uh, for a split, for like a split few minutes, I thought that that there were. Um, that it, I was just watching a completely different show with with Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Hillary in it, 
But um, I, that's what I liked about it. And then it was like, a, yeah. And, and then once, Luc- and then I remember when Lucille died and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. We're watching here's Neg- here's here's Negan. This is freaking phenomenal. Well, yeah, exactly. It's like you kind of forget you're watching an episode of The Walking Dead, and you're just watching like this short film with uh, JDM and Hillary Burton. But then, yeah, when uh, Lucille's being built, and like you have The Walking Dead references, you're like. Yep, this is here's Negan, and um, man, what a freaking episode, man! Holy crap! Yep. The, to me, the moment it feels like, because I actually agree with that. I think that like the whole, it feels like JDM and Hillary Burton just doing a completely like different project. But then the, the moment it kind of sinks in for me personally is when you see Laura give the bat to Negan, and you just got that smile when he sees the like the first like burst of Lucille, and he's just like, ooh, like I don't know. That's when it kind of like became. Yeah, not to mention the callbacks and the references in this episode were freaking off the chart amazing. Um, I gotta give a shout out to that freaking Breaking Bad Easter egg for all my Breaking Bad OG fans that know that season one, episode one. Uh, yeah, there's a legit callback to the series premiere of Breaking Bad in this episode. And I wonder how many people caught that actually. I know, could you imagine? I kind of wish, like, <laughs> you just even, they even, like, do that, too. Well. I, I, I feel like they didn't want to go overboard on it, but I'm like, dude, you're already doing a reference, go all the way, sure. I know, Guys, right? We just, about, we just talked about that underrated scene that people will just look over. And it's the part where, um, the, um, when, they, when she turns on the radio and they, and she hears about the, uh, flesh eating, you know, like, people coming up from the dead and eating, you know, eating the flesh of others. Like, and she's, you know, she's, like, so caught up in what she's, what what's happening in the real world that she's, like, you know, just, like, ah, I don't care, you know, she don't care. Yeah, even though you're hearing about flesh-eating monsters eating other people. Yeah, exactly. That's how you know your life is stressful when you don't even focus on that. Like, those words are not even a priority. Because you know when most people heard that, they're probably freaked out, like, oh, wait, what the hell? It's such an underrated scene, like, I, I, I mean... People, like, talk about the whole, like, episode, which is, a, it's great, I mean, I love it. But, like, you know, people just skip over that scene, they're like, oh, well, that, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I was like, but there's the thing, that, that's, like, one of the best things of the episode for me. Like, just that. Exactly. Yeah, it was a great scene, like, I think every moment in this episode served its purpose. <laughs> Agreed. Um... Yeah. You know what's another really great scene is uh, Negan playing video games with Back in Black in the background. Mm-hmm. I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs. I was like thrilled. Yeah. When I heard that music, I'm like, oh fucking right, I love this tune. That. I also like would love to kind of like highlight as you hear that, like I like the little reference when he's playing video games that they do the reference to like a classic Negan line, like you're a bunch of. I know. You know what it kind of reminded me of? And I know it's a really obscure reference, but I feel like they might have tried to somewhat reference this. But, uh, you know the beginning of Iron Man 1, when uh, you see the military going through on, in the desert, and you've got, like, Back in Black that just starts playing? I felt kind of like that. Yeah. Oh, I love that scene in Iron Man. When, like, one second they're just listening to Back in Black, and the next, boom. <laughs> just an explosion yeah it, it almost feels like that it was a uh yeah i feel like that was a cool little callback and um gears of war even gets a little bit of a cameo in this too which is cool because i really like that game i think it's really cool it's kind of funny to even like because in the walking dead you don't even think about like oh what was this even real in the walking dead universe but then it's kind of crazy you, like you go back in time and you're like oh yeah i forget these characters actually used to live normal lives at one point you kind of just forget about that when you're seeing them just surviving in alexandria and stuff that these characters did have normal lives at one point and this episode kind of reminds you of that you know what's also insane to like people forget sometimes but you know at that time you know, they were still in, like, early, like, 2010s. The outbreak happened in 2010, and it's hard for get. I saw I was like, wow, well, Negan's playing an Xbox 360, wow, in 2020? For some reason, I thought that for a split second. 
And then I was like, wait a second, the outbreak happened in 2010. Yeah, exactly. And I like that they got the accuracy down with the time period. Because if he was just playing an Xbox One or something, it would just be like, okay, that's stupid. But it's... Yeah. Yeah, but the Xbox 360 callback, too, is just awesome, too, because, like, I don't know. It was just so cool seeing all these just normal, everyday life things in The Walking Dead. It was just cool to just see yep. that. Yep. It I, I like how they kind of bring in, like, even, like, music that's, like, kind of, you know, from now, like, like, like music that's in our real world, because it's like, you know, when you watch Walking Dead, you kind of question, like, what's in the universe and what doesn't exist. Well, exactly, yeah. but I like. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, like, I like to think. For some reason, I like to think that um, the the Walking Dead takes place in an alternate world, like an alternate type of like reality, where like you know, um, you know, like in 2010, like there was like a, a, a virus that a release of force, and you know, versions of ourselves are living that. That's what I love about it with this episode, though, is it's just like any other normal freaking day. Like, you just see kids playing, like, people going to work, and you see, like, you know, Xbox and all that. And it's like any normal freaking day, except the only thing that's different is that freaking the dead start to roam. And that's what I love about it is it feels relatable in a way like yeah just a normal like everyday person just doing their normal stuff and then the apocalypse hits yep, yep. the walking dead time timeline is hard to follow yeah I, I mean i can get that me personally though i don't think it's too bad in my opinion i like, i think it's pretty easy to follow well, personally here's the thing about the walking dead timeline that everybody jumps to they're like oh wait carl's in it like like, Carl's, like, supposed to be, like, what, 14, 13? I mean, but you gotta keep in mind, guys, this is an actual, this is an actual, act, like, actor and not some comic book character. Like, so, he's gonna age. It's just part well, of it. Yeah, you, you can't know. slow down aging, yeah. Who do you think the best actor is on The Walking Dead? Uh, JDM, there's no question. Oh, yeah, JDM. I gotta disagree on that one, actually. I'm gonna go with Andrew Lincoln. I do really freaking love Andrew Lincoln, but uh, there's something about JDM this episode, man, that sold him as my favorite actor. Uh, let's go with like the one. Let's go with like the ones that's re like just like still on there. Like that are still on the show, even yeah. Let's yeah, well, see. Then if we're talking ones on the show, then I would agree. Yep. Yeah. If Andrew Lincoln was still around, it would still be JDM, though, and I'll tell you why. It's because Negan, it doesn't feel like, apart from when he's being a fucking psychopath in the early seasons, that is acting. But when Negan's just being Negan, it just feels like JDM just being himself on camera. Yep. The only reason why I, I pick Andrew Lincoln, though, just to specify, is because, like, he's, I don't know, man, the way the dude, he can pull you into a scene almost just as much. I would say the two guys that definitely can do this is Andrew Lincoln and Lenny James. The way they pull you into, like, basically any scene is insane. Also, you gotta love about, like, what I love about Lenny James is how loyal he's been to the franchise. They've, like, held his character back. They've, like, put him onto a spinoff. And the guy sticks with it. So, you know, I'm mad respect to that actor, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, they legit made him, like, a freaking crap character in Fear Season 4. Five, yeah, four, legit, five, like, there's a rumor going around that Lenny was starting to, like, not want to be a part of it anymore, but he stuck it through. Well, I mean, I agree with, I mean, I, I, I definitely think that rumor is true, because Lenny's just a freaking fantastic guy. Yeah. I will say, though, a, a character, I get he is, I get he's popular, and uh, I get people love him, but a character that, honestly, he's just not been the best recently, and yeah, I'm gonna say it, uh, Daryl. I just don't know, man. Daryl, they just gotta do more with the guy. Yeah. yeah. And again, 
anything against Daryl. However, I do have to kind of highlight kind of the elephant in the room in this is that, think about this. We've had, like, a good few episodes of 10C that focus around Daryl. And it's just like, man, honestly, you watch those episodes and it's like, eh, it's all right, I guess. And then you literally only get one episode of Negan. And it's like a million times better. I'm just saying. Well, yeah. It, I mean, it goes to show you that Negan... Like, as of now, not counting Rick, Morgan, and all the characters that aren't on the main show at the moment. Right now, who's on the main cast that's the best character? I've been saying this for a long time, guys, and it's my opinion, but Negan. There's there's no comparison to the guy. Like, honestly, if Negan were to die on the main show, it would very badly damage the main show for me to a point where I would actually f say that the roster is weak. Yep, which it already is. Yeah. Right now, best the two best characters on the main cast right now, I know this is a controversial pick for number two, but it's uh, JDM is Negan, and then number two would be Seth Gilliam as uh, Father Gabriel, in my opinion. I would agree with that, actually. I, I, dude, the way he also, episode 19, like, I'm not a big fan of it, you guys know that. I think it's just alright. But, honestly, man, every scene he's in in that episode, I still think. Yeah. Also, I just gotta add, I'm just gonna go like, uh, I just wanna talk about some actors here, but, um, the mistreatment of some actors in 10C is just so, like, honestly, it's pretty pitiful in my opinion. Like, you get Josh McDermott to come back, and you just have him for one hallucination scene. Like, what? <sighs> and, uh, let's not mention, uh, Kaylee Fleming and Cassidy McClincy. They come back. They literally have, like, two minutes of screen time in all of 10C, dude. Oh, man. Cassidy's the worst. It's like, yeah, yeah, we're good to go. And then we don't even see her until, like, season 11. That just doesn't make any sense. I do have a theory about it, though. Is I bet, yeah, right after 10C, they kept the actors for season 11. So they didn't fly out or anything. They probably stayed for season 11. Because during 10C's airing, we already know, 1106 has been filmed or whatever. I think that's the case, so... They've uh, moved on to 11.07 now, so obviously they've been filming season 11. Yep, and some of the casting crew, um, I mean, we all know this has been kind of all over the place for a while, but the casting crew has also been living in some of the Alexandria homes. That is so yep. cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, okay, uh, some theories for season 11. Do you guys think the Reapers will will go to 11B or will 11A be their end? Me personally, I think 11A they're done. Yeah, probably. Not. I'd say 11B is when we go full force into the more, uh, new world order. Yeah, I think uh, I think we'll have like the first half of the season be them. I think we will get a little bit of Commonwealth, seeing how we already heard from Mercer's voice and they haven't even filmed the entirety of 11A. Yeah, with, uh, unfortunately, f this is pretty much confirmed, but we're gonna have the frickin' Connie and Virgil episode. You know what, uh, episode three. Yeah. There's also, there, there's a name drop in, name drop in 1020 of Mercer, if you guys didn't know. Oh, yeah, you hear the Commonwealth soldiers talking about it in Splinter? Yep. yep. He's like, wait till you, wait till Mercer gets a load of this or something like that. Yeah, that's what they say. I'm telling you guys, Mercer is being introduced first from the Commonwealth characters. It's just they've teased his name in 1020. There's a voice reveal, an armor reveal, and a casting con confirmation. So, what more do you need, like, to confirm that? Like, Mercer is definitely our first Commonwealth character that's going to be shown, and I actually like that because it flips things around. Because in the comics, he's the last we see. Yep. Yeah, I think what they're doing is that they're like, well, we've taken, we like, think about it, in the comic we had the scene where, like, he shows up, and after the introduction of basically everybody else, and I feel like in the TV show version, they, they took the fan reaction from the comic, and they're like, well, uh, damn, okay, it looks like fans really like it, so, yeah, we'll introduce the first. I, I actually like that, and another theory I have, and, um, I, it's only a 50-50, but... Do you guys think they might not even have Lance on the show? 
Uh, no. I think they'll have Lance. Yeah, but what purpose does he really have, though, in terms of doing interviews? That's where my questions kind of come in. Same. Like, yeah, I think we'll still see Lance, but I think they're going to change his role drastically. Or he's going to be the main villain. Maybe, like, the show's like, hey, we don't want a kid to be the main villain for the final season, so we'll have Lance do the main villain stuff. I'm telling you, man, they should have done, just went ahead and done Lance in 1020. I agree with that, yeah. That guy should have been Lance, not this random guy. Agreed. Oh, agreed. Hey, Matt, does Jeffrey Dean Morgan beat David Morrissey's governor? Uh, here's Negan confirmed yes for me, but that's not a jab at David Morrissey or the governor by any means. I still uh, love the performance he pulled, but uh, JDM as Negan is a performance unmatched. Agreed. Well, he was already my favorite character of the cast and everything, but this episode, it just confirmed it for me. Like, I had doubts, like, well, maybe Daryl is a bit better, but then I see 1022 and I'm like, nope, Negan's the best. Uh, yep. Yeah, it solidified it for me. Here's Negan Smokes 1020. Oh, it does more than that. Uh, it just it demolishes 1020 and makes it wish it never existed. <laughs> yeah, but you could basically go with like the fact that it kind of story-wise didn't exist. Right? Well, I know when I binge The Walking Dead on my many series binges, I won't be uh, ever watching 1020. There's just no purpose to it. In fact, a lot of 10C episodes will be getting skipped. These are the only ones I'll be watching from 10C. And, uh, yeah, I love all these episodes. I think they're all great. 1017, 1019, 1022. Those are, like, the highlight, yep. like, 10C episodes. They're all very good, in my opinion. Yes, I know, I used to not like 1019. But, honestly, I've rewatched it about three times now. And it's honestly a fun watch, just to rewatch, see the Russian roulette, see Robert Patrick as Maze. I don't know. Agreed. I just appreciate that episode more and more I watch it, personally. Agreed. I getcha. Hey, like Matt, dog kinda makes Daryl more interesting and enjoyable. I guess he kinda does. Gives him a companion, yeah. Gives him kinda like that. I don't know though. Um, yeah, I yeah maybe. Kinda. Me personally, I think Daryl has always just been fine. Other than season eight, I will never defend season eight, Daryl. That was atrocious. But uh, other than that, yeah, Daryl's always been a pretty decent character. Uh, season 10 Daryl, though, um, he's been good, but in the same token, he didn't feel like the leading man this season. I'm just gonna say it, he didn't, Negan did. Negan felt more main than Daryl in season 10. Yeah, which in season 9, this is up for debate, I know, but in season 9, it actually kind of did feel like he was the lead at, at a point, to be honest, him and kind of Michonne, but in season 10, it just feels like he's Negan season. Yeah. Okay, Negan versus Governor, who's better? Okay, I'm going to rank this into two categories here. As a character, Negan by Miles. As a villain, Governor. I agree. What do you think, Cade? I think Cade's AFK. Okay. But yeah, Negan as a character, much better, honestly. Negan as a character... He actually has a whole story arc and a continuing arc that will go into, like, the final episodes, more than likely. And, uh, Governor, great villain, very scary, intimidating presence, but as a character, yeah, he's just there to be a big villain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, past the villain side of things, he's not, and again, like, I'm trying to say this the best way I can, but past the villain side of things, he's not much of a character. Well, I mean, what would you rather watch? Frickin' 406 or 1022? The proof's in the pudding. <laughs> Majorly. Like, uh, 406 and 407, they tried to humanize the governor. 406, in my opinion, is a terrible episode. 407 is great, though. I love the uh, small takeover of the camp and stuff. It's just... 
you know, the governor's character, they tried to humanize him. They tried to make him a real, like, character, like, that you can relate to. But it's all, like, for nothing, really, because he just dies in 408. So it's like, yeah, well, I don't see a point in humanizing him. Too little, too late, my opinion. I mean, we should have had this in Season 3. If you want my honest opinion, the governor shouldn't have died in... Shouldn't have died in season four. He should have died in three. I feel like too far gone should have been 316 because well What did the governor's story do in season four? It just didn't do anything like have season four Just be a shorter season have them on the road have the terminus build up have the claimer stuff, but make it a shorter season Yep, and not to mention this is a storyline. I don't understand why this storyline doesn't get I, I feel like I'm the only person that doesn't like this storyline sometimes because I don't hear much hate about it. Is that I could not stand the illness storyline and mainly because of how it delayed the governor. Well, it was just there, and um, yes, I'm gonna say this, guys. The illness storyline is filler. It's filler to hold off the governor. That's all it is. Yeah, there's there is one part that I like, and it's literally such a small part, but it's a piece of dialogue that I don't know why. I kind of laugh every time I watch it. It's like like the person's like, yeah, Glenn will make it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good scene. If we get a governor backstory episode like we got for Negan, will it be good? Only time will tell. We're not getting an episode, though. We're getting a whole backstory series. <laughs> yep. We're getting a governor spinoff, which will focus on, obviously, the building of Woodbury and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think, it, uh, I think it'll be a good series, personally. What do you think, Dan? Exactly. Yo, Dan, can't wait for World Gone Mad to return. It was so good. That's, uh, Rowdy. Uh, Rowdy? Okay, well, yeah, awesome, dude. Uh, season 2, I'll let you know. Uh, the season 2 finale is in the writing right now, and filming begins at the end of this month, so it's coming along. Yeah. Honestly, I think I speak for all of us here, like, fans of the show, when I say that, uh, season 1 was a uh, masterpiece in my opinion. I think it was very well told, the storytelling was very good, and uh, the character moments, the drama, it was all very well told, and honestly, season two, with it being 12 episodes, I love the uh, potential like you have like with the 12 episodes and stuff. Thanks, man. Yeah, in 12 episodes, I know it sounds like, ooh, are we going into a filler territory, but no, don't worry, I've written it out to where every episode has a major purpose. Yeah. Negan deserves his own spinoff. Well, uh, he's getting one. <laughs> it's confirmed, and I believe it'll be called Negan Lives. Don't quote me on that. That's just a theory I have, because I feel like they've used Here's Negan as a title, so they'll probably go with Negan Lives for his spinoff. And uh, I feel like the premiere will be an adaptation of the comic, and then obviously the rest of it will just be TV-only material, which is going to be cool to see how uh, whoever's writing it at the time handles it, which I hope it's Angela Kang, because honestly, how she wrote, here's Negan, they need her for Negan Lives. That'll be fun to see, uh, like, the, the pilot for that episode, but I'm just going to be more hyped for the rest of the show, because we'll have no clue. Exactly. The pilot will be a fun little comic adaptation, which, yes, guys, by the way, I really do like Negan Lives. I think that is a fine comic. I think it's a good read, and it's a good reintroduction to the Negan character. And, uh, it honestly, um, it's a good read in my opinion. So if you guys haven't read it, I definitely recommend giving it a read. It's really entertaining story in my opinion. Yep, and I, I actually think that is a comic that's very underrated. It gets a lot of hate for some reason. Well, what did they expect? Negan to fight this big group and, like, be all-out war already? It's like, we gotta, like, it's like, the guy's out on his road by him, out on the road by himself, like, what do you really expect? <laughs> I know, so he still has a skirmish with these guys, too, so we still got some action going on right off the bat. Yeah. One of the guys looked like Comic Rick, though, like, one of the guys looked a little way too similar to Comic Rick. Like, I feel like that was intentionally just done to be a callback to Rick, which I think is a cool little Easter egg. Yep, it's a Kirkman thing to do, in other words. Mm-hmm.
pull out the pitchforks, but I think live bait is a great episode. Well, yeah, that's your opinion, man. Um, yeah, it, uh, me personally, I don't care for it, but 407, really good episode. Who said they like episode six? Uh, Rowdy. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I, I'll be, actually, I'll tell you one thing, Rowdy. I like the opening, like, maybe 10 minutes, and then it just gets really boring. Agreed. JDM was the perfect choice for Negan. Agreed. No one else can pull it off as good. Hey, Matt. TV Negan versus Comic Negan. Which is better? Oh, uh, TV Negan. Definitely. The way JDM has done it. And, by the way, guys, um, I would have said Comic Negan before Season 10. But Season 10, man, it literally upped Negan's character from being, like, a really good character. Like, in Season 9, I would have said Daryl was the best. But after this season, Negan, man. Like, what a step up of a character, man. Because Season 7, really good character, really good villain. Season 8, well, I don't know what they were doing with him in Season 8. They misused Negan so badly that season. And Season 9, he's good, but he's in a cell the whole time. However, the finale was great. And then you get Season 10, and you're just like, holy crap, this character has gotten a major upgrade. Not to mention it's his season, in my opinion. Like, this main story arc, in my opinion, is Negan infiltrating the Whisper camp and uh, taking down Alpha. That's the main plot of Season 10, is killing Alpha. And who's the one who's on the mission to do that? Negan. Yo, my, my opinion is the same as yours, dude, honestly. Except I'm going to tweak it a bit for my, uh, my opinion. It's literally, uh, in my opinion, it's about his redemption. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, I'll go with that, too. It's really like, yeah, the story, the main story arc of season 10 is Negan finally, you know, becoming a member of the community, going out on a freaking, like, really dangerous mission to kill a leader of a psycho cult. And then not only that, but then after she's dead, you gotta deal with the fallout, which Negan helps with, and uh, that's when him and Daryl kind of tag team beta. He'll stay, and he's damn proud to be a member of the community and isn't ashamed of himself anymore, which is a great ending for the season, because earlier in Season 10, you could tell Negan kind of just hates himself a lot, and he's, like, ashamed of himself when he's at Alexandria. But uh, after here's Negan, he's like, no, I put my life on the risk. I, have like, fought for you people. I saved lives. I've earned my place here, and I'm damn well going to keep my spot here. Honestly, he did more for Alexandria than Maggie could ever think she did, in my opinion. Yep, I agree on that. And she has, on, in my opinion, she has no place in any decisions on Negan. Well, no, I mean, she's out hanging out with Elijah and Cole, just d doing whatever the hell they were doing, and, uh, friggin' Negan is just, uh, Negan is out, like, risking his life, he's in the Whisper camp, he's, uh, you know, and he did think he was gonna die, cause like Dan was saying on Brian's stream a night ago, um, in 1009, Negan thought he was going to get executed by Alpha, and he was saying his final words and everything. Man, you know what, this would be a cool line, I don't know if, like, obviously this would suck, because then everybody would be like, oh, I, I don't like Negan again, I would love this personally, though, if, like, if Negan literally looked at Maggie and was like, yeah, I saved the group from, like, like, these people that wear skins, and, you know, Maggie, if you want to make yourself useful, how about you turn that group around and you let them towards us and the Reapers? Like, why don't you take that group and get them away from here and keep them here? Oh, dude, I could just imagine Negan putting her in her place. He just looks at her, and he's just like, well, you brought another damn problem here, so why don't you go fix that, instead of worrying about me? It's like Negan just puts her in her place and he's like, yeah, I took a group away from this place while you brought one here. So what do you got to say? Well, that's actually something I was about to mention is, um, Alexandria was just destroyed by Beta and his, uh, crew. And then freaking Negan deals with the threat again. He freaking puts his life on the line again to kill Beta, risks Beta killing him in the Horde. 
And obviously, if it wasn't for Daryl, Beta would have killed Negan. There's just no question about it. So Daryl saves Negan. Daryl legit put it, or not Daryl up. Negan put his life on the line twice to kill Alpha and Beta. And what does Maggie do? She brings another threat to Alexandria. Like, and she thinks that she's in charge of decisions and that Negan has to get out. It's like, holy crap, you're wanting to speak. Yeah, you brought the Reapers here. It's like, freaking, the Reapers weren't coming to Alexandria on their own. You legit led them to the community. Yep, and we know from the set pictures, and honestly, this is just, it's, you know, we know this full well because the set pictures of season 11, episode 1, the Reapers make their stand. They attack, and they kill up. Yep, I understand why Maggie's getting so much hate. I get it. Yeah, I mean,. She just got to stop going after Negan, in my opinion, and I feel like it's only going to get worse in Season 11, which I think is going to lead, and yes, I'm going to say it, I think we're going to see Maggie and Negan actually, like, get into, a, like, a fight, like a physical fight. I think it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. There's actually people that are doing that right now, like Team Maggie or Team Negan, and everyone in a poll was, like, Team Negan. <laughs> It's kind of like, uh, we're all sitting there and we're like, I am Negan! <laughs> I know, we're, we're Negan and proud. <laughs> exactly. So far, besides Here's Negan and Home Sweet Home, 2021 has been pretty meh year for The Walking Dead. I'm not going to say it's been a meh year, just because we do have a really amazing Walking Dead episode that honestly topped the top tens. So I'll say it's still been a good year. Plus the Mercer teaser and all that. Like, I say we still have gotten some great Walking Dead content this year. Wait, who said that? Uh, Rowdy. Yeah, I, I, could, I hear you on that honestly, but yeah, actually, like Matt was saying, to get a top 10 episode, you already have done something right in that year. Yeah, because let's be honest, there's 150 plus episodes of The Walking Dead. And uh, to get in the top 10, you have to be a damn good, flawless episode to get there. If I've got a flaw, Angela Kang, she ruined Maggie. Oh, I'd say Gimple did in Season 7. Yep. Angela just kind of, uh, continued down that road, I guess. Well, I mean, to be fair, I'm not gonna completely attack Angela for that yet, because, let's be honest, we just haven't seen Maggie that much during the Angela Kang era. Plus, 1017, I'm not gonna lie, Maggie was really good that episode. Honestly, you want my opinion, the writers need to get this Negan and Maggie conflict over before the Commonwealth, because honestly, I feel like it's gonna bog stuff down, like, oh, Maggie wants to kill Negan, it's like, bro, we've been doing this dance since season 7, can we just kill this plotline now? I know, it's like, ooh, like, what is Mercer gonna do, oh, meanwhile, what is Maggie gonna do with the whole Negan situation, you know, it's like, dude, well, it's like, how long have we been doing this now? Like, this whole Maggie-Negan rivalry has been going on since Season 7. Uh, All Out War has been over in the Walking Dead timeline for about 8 years now. It's like, drop it, Maggie, please. Yeah, for my own sanity, also. <laughs> Holy crap. Like, it's been 8 years. I mean, just, uh, I don't know, man. Maggie just drives me nuts sometimes, Dan. The reason I say Angela Kang ruined Maggie is because she's making her so hated. I can see that epic, but in the same token, Gimple is the one that fully brought this plotline into fruition. Especially that 816 scene when she's talking with Daryl and they're plotting to kill him in his cell. It's just, it's so bad in my opinion. And that is Gimple's writing. So, I mean, Angela kind of got stuck with the broken pieces of that. Because in Season 9, you, you can't just be like, you know, oh, Maggie forgives Negan now because it just makes no sense. However, I do think in 10C, this plotline should have been done. So I can partially see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, I'll agree. I, I, I think Maggie, honestly, this whole Maggie and Negan thing should have been done when the Maggie character left in uh, Season 9, Episode 5. Well, how perfect would it have been 
if the final, like, scene of that conflict was that scene in the cell from 905. Yeah, but it kind of ruins that a little bit. Not, like, ruins it, but it just makes it a little more pointless, just because that is originally supposed to be the end, because people didn't know if Lauren Cohen was coming back as Maggie. But then she comes back, and she starts acting like this again. It's like, no, th this, this has happened. It's old news. Stop bringing it back up. Well, yeah, which, uh, well, let's be honest, um, Negan's not gonna put up with that anymore. You can just tell at the end of Here's Negan, he's like, yeah, bring it on, I'm ready for you. I'm not scared of you no more. No, and, man, honestly, I, I just, we need this storyline to be done. We have, we have too much going on in the final season already, why not end one of these storylines? Like I said in Brian's stream, this episode adds more tragedy to Maggie trying to kill Negan in 905. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. It does add more there. But in the same token, I will always say this to Maggie, like, you had your chance to kill him, you chickened out, and, uh, yeah, that's done. You don't have the right to try and kill him anymore. Because if you killed him in 905, um, I would be like, yeah, okay, he, he was a bad guy, I, I get it. I would still hate her for it, because I love the Negan character, but in the same token, morally, if I was like, you know just seeing it from that perspective, I'd be like, okay, I kind of get it, yeah, he was terrible, but after he becomes a hero, he, uh, kills the Whisper, single-handedly ends an entire war by himself, and puts his life on the line twice to kill Alpha and Beta, that's where I draw the line, and I'm like, okay, no, fuck off, Negan's done more than you ever have, not to mention, and I'm always gonna say this, but in 916, right, when, um, Judith and Dog get lost in the snowstorm. No one even makes an attempt to save them except for Negan. Like, it speaks volumes of his character. Yep, because you have Gabriel there, you have all these characters, and they're just like, well, I guess she's gone. Like, that's not what they say, but you can clearly tell her. It's just like, who goes after her? Negan does. Like, huh. And there's legit a voice in the background in 916, like, shouting, we have to leave them! No, S Sadiq, Eugene, Gabriel, Rosita, none of them do anything, except for Negan. And that at that scene, when he saves them, and uh, you have that scene where he even saves Dog, too, I'm just like, okay, this is a good person, and honestly, this is a good person now. He's not a bad dude anymore. He's changed. Not to mention when he thought he was going to get executed in 1009. After that episode, he stays at the Whisperer camp. So it's like he still goes through with the mission. Yep, and not to mention literally the scene right after that, he does, you know what, with Alpha. So it's like, yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, the guy's, you know, he's been through a lot of shit. That's all I'm going to say. He's been through a lot of hell. And he put, he, he stuck through it. He got the job done, and to see Carol just treat him like shit after, it just, oh, it ticks me right off. Yep, the, the two characters right now that I'm just, like, targeting right now, I'm not gonna lie, is Carol and Maggie, but, like, let's be honest, for what Negan did, and, yeah, you could argue this, whatever, but in my opinion, Negan deserves his own house now, like, give him his own house. Which I feel like he kind of is gonna have now, I kind of feel like they'll give him his own spot. I love when, uh, Carol's talking to him at the gate, and she's like, oh yeah, they're just going out on a run, and Negan's like, hey, well, while you're at it, can you just tell him to go and get my, pack my stuff up, uh, tell him I'm moving back in? <laughs> I know, he's, I know, he's just like, yeah, that whole thing's not gonna work. Yeah, and I like how Carol's like, eh, alright, I'll tell Gabriel, I'll be fine with it, and he's just like, yep, well, I'm back. Yep, and I'm sitting there for a second, I'm like, wait, Gabriel? 
Well, I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, that cliffhanger's useless now, perfect. <laughs> yeah, just to wrap up any other crap from 10C, that, that actually, you know, they even fixed that little stupid cliffhanger. So, I'm just gonna say, man, here's Negan. As an episode overall, masterpiece. For Negan's character, phenomenal. And honestly, like, I'm just gonna say, Negan, man, his character going into season 11 he is the leading character now for me like i know daryl's there i know he's been around since season one but negan honestly he gives me the closest thing to a rick grimes character right now yep and not to mention and man i just unfortunately the damage is already done but the final season is not done filming so they have they still have a chance to do this man why can't you make negan's look for season 11 be him with the leather jacket I feel like it will be. Just because in because in 1017 he has it again. He wears it during the Whisperer War. I feel like it is going to be the leather jacket. And uh, yeah, um, I don't think Negan's going to be sitting around in prison attire anymore. <laughs> I feel like it will be, because, uh, I just don't see Negan sitting there being like, hey, I'm just gonna stay in my prison clothes. I don't think he's gonna be, like, all for it, because he's not a prisoner anymore. He's not a prisoner, he's free to roam around. Yep, he's not a prisoner, he's part of the community, and man, wouldn't it be nice to even, like, in season 11, he's just, like, he even takes, like, maybe a guard shift or something, like, they even make him do that. Imagine he's chilling there with, like, Aaron and Gabriel. And he, Negan just looks at them, he's like, you miss me? <laughs> I know, oh man, maybe they're like, in like a guard tower or something, and they're just like, chilling there, and we have a scene like, maybe even like a ten minute talk with them, that's cool. They're like, playing cards or something. Oh, I'd love it. If you really don't want Negan in Alexandria, at least find him a safe place to stay and send him supplies a lot. Yeah, you know that they wouldn't do that though, Rowdy. They would just treat him like shit. Well, I want Negan to be a part of this community. I want him to feel like a true member and that he has a place there. Yep, and this is the most arguable, like, topic ever, but Negan earned his place. He absolutely did. I mean, I'm not even going to argue that. I don't, think ne I don't think you can argue that he doesn't deserve a spot. Because, honestly, the dude has done more than a lot of characters would ever do. Like, not even Daryl would try and go into the Whisper camp to take out Alpha. No, 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 even Daryl, I feel like there'd be a limit to where he would stop. Where Negan's just like, yeah, if I die, I die, but if I succeed, I'm gonna save a lot of people, so fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Yep, and it's the thought that counts is really the point I'm trying to say about the whole Negan thing. Not to mention, he legit tries to kill the old way of himself a lot in this season. Like, you have Brandon in 9, or not 9, uh, 1005, who's, like, trying to hold on to the old ways of Negan, and he's trying to hold on to that old mindset. Negan's telling him to drop that shit and tells him to leave. He's like, no, I'm not like that anymore. It's like, stop. And he's like, no, you're you're Negan, you're a legend, like, we have to kill people and all this. Negan, when he sees that he's beat those two people's brains in, the kid and the uh, mother, he, he is beyond enraged, and he puts Brandon down hard. He sure does. Oh, yeah, he, he tries to escape the past, like, a lot of times in the season 10, and I feel like they just kind of capped it off really well with here's Negan. And here's Negan, you know when, this is one of my favorite Negan lines ever, when he's talking to evil Negan in the cabin, and he's like, you're a cult of personality with no cult. I know, yeah, and he calls him a clown too, like, yeah. It's cool because when he calls him a clown, it's like he's actually talking to that guy from season 7, like that guy, the Negan from the Saviors. And it's like the current Negan talking to him like, yeah, you were always a clown, like, you're just a jackass, like, get out of here. Yep. And I actually love that he puts that evil Negan, like, in my opinion, evil Negan is gone now, we're never gonna see him again. And, uh, this new Negan is how we're gonna see him for the rest of the series into the spinoff. 
but there's another character that they literally just confirmed is going to survive. Yeah, yeah, if you guys didn't know, the Negan spinoff does actually confirm the, uh, spinoff. Like, the spinoff confirms his survival, so, uh, yeah, Negan is good to go. He's going to survive the main series, and I am all for the spinoff. I'm going to be honest, I'm happy that I know he survives, honestly, because... I don't want to sit there and worry about Maggie trying to kill him anymore. No, I want to I want to enjoy the final season with knowing Negan safe and I can just enjoy his character and not worry. Daryl and Carol on the other hand, I wish I didn't know about them. No, that'd be some good tension actually. If like if you thought like if we we're actually speculating right now of like darn, could they actually kill one of them like, you know? Which I thought they would have. Like if I didn't know about the spin-off, I'd say Okay, either Daryl or Carol, one of them's dead. I would have said Carol and, like, a possible Daryl survival, but I would have still said, like, maybe about a 50% chance they could just off Daryl, too. Yep. Negan, though, uh, yeah, I'm glad I know that he's fine, because, uh, honestly, I don't want to worry about that character. I want to see that character live on and, like, do creator things. Yep, and if we want to go the AMC route when it comes to the advertisement, AMC is like crazy about ooh, before the future and the franchise lives on. Uh, yeah, if you want your franchise to live on, you're gonna keep Negan around. So you're already doing a good job. Well, exactly. It keeps the fans assured too. Like, yeah, we're not killing him. In fact, we got more in store for this guy. And once the main show's over, you're gonna get a whole show just about Negan. Yep. Which I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, can you like scrap the comedy series idea? And any little bit of comedy ideas you had, just incorporate that into Negan Lynch, because it's going to mess well anyway. Exactly, I was saying that too, like, make that the comedy series. Yep, then you, then you know people are going to watch it, it's like, Negan jokes? Yeah, that's already amazing as it is. Hey Matt, how did you feel about Negan's redemption in the comics? I thought it was also very well done. Um, I thought it was great, and comic Negan is still a great character. I just prefer TV Negan personally. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. I actually agree with that. Evil Negan is dead. You're dealing with good Negan now. <laughs> oh, God, Rowdy. <laughs> Um, yes, I want Negan to live as well. Plus, I could tell JDM loves playing Negan. Oh, yeah. Um, I think he's fully for the role, and, uh, JDM, I think, is loyal and wants to stay with the Negan character in the Walking Dead franchise for as long as he can. Oh, yeah. No, nah, he's not going anywhere, honestly. The, I was worried for a bit, I'm not gonna lie, but then, when I heard about the spinoff and stuff, I'm like, alright, it just kind of reassured me that, like, yeah, JDM is loving this right now. Yep, he's all on board. Negan is less bad than Carol right now. Oh, not only that, but he's triumphed over Carol's character. He's knocked her out of my top five completely. Oh, I can't, I can't stand Carol right now, which is unfortunate, because I used to love her back in the day, and now I just, every time I see her, I'm actually annoyed. Season 7 is when she started to go downhill. Season 8, she was fine, though. She was just being her normal, killing people self. Season 9, she's decent. And then Season 10, oh my lord. What did they do to her? Yeah, I don't have any problems with Season, uh, season 8, Carol, actually, really dig. Season 9, yeah, she's alright. And then Season 10, I'm just like, now, what is this switch up? Like, I don't understand. In Season 8, she's actually a good character, because she was actually trying to keep Psycho Morgan under control. Like... It's actually a small butt blanket, you'll miss it, detail. But when Carol is knocking out the saviors at the kingdom, she knocks them out. And then Morgan kills them when, like, Carol's done. And you can tell she kind of just looks annoyed with him when he does it. Not to mention, one of the best, like, emotional scenes with Carol is actually in season 8 for me personally. I don't know why. It's a scene no one really talks about. But it's the part where, where Morgan and Carol are, like, looking for Henry. And you've got that talk with them he talks about like how like you know he, he, Morgan sees people die again and again and it's always like it's always gonna go that way and stuff I, just, I don't know that talk is really good 
Exactly. Like, Carol's had her good moments, don't get me wrong. Carol has actually been a really fantastic character at times. Season 5, 8 in particular, I think 5 and 8 are Carol's, like, really good seasons. Uh, season 9, she's actually not a bad character. I think she's actually a pretty freaking good character in Season 9. And then Season 10, man, I'm sorry, she's just dreadful. Yep. Negan is legit a good guy now. Well, yeah. He's, he's a hero, if you ask me. He saved a community from another war. Yep. In my opinion, that statement is uh, long overdue. Because back when Negan first got the news about him playing a villain, he was like, it's fucking Negan, and I'm fucking doing it. That's awesome. Dude, the, the passion that JDM has for the character, too, it's like, that's how you know that this guy was the right choice to play Negan. Man, I'd be jumping for excitement too, playing Negan, dude. Like, holy fuck, you're legit the star of the show. I know. Hey, and dude, imagine being like the person that has to tell him that, too. I'd be freaking thrilled, like, just hearing him saying that. Yep. You know what's funny is they actually called a JDM, and uh, they used the code name Orin. They, that, that was the code name they used for Negan's uh, casting. And they told him, yeah, you'll be playing a guy known as Orin. And he's like, no, it's fucking Negan. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, no, nah, it's Negan, and uh, I'm ready to play him. Tuh. Yep. Carol just annoys me. She annoys me like Alicia in Fear Season 2. Oh, she's even worse than Alicia in Fear Season 2, if you ask me. Yeah, at least Alicia in Fear Season 2, like, there's still some good moments there, whereas Carol, it's like, oh man, she's got almost no redeeming factor. Yeah, 10-16's her only good episode this season, which is unfortunate. Exactly. Like, can't blame him. Negan is such an iconic character. Exactly. Negan is an iconic character for sure. Not only for The Walking Dead, but honestly, this guy just needs more praise in the media, like, of just characters overall. Like, he's just, like, in my opinion, he's one of those characters that, even when I'm not talking about The Walking Dead, people are like, hey, what's your favorite TV show and movie characters? Negan will always be a mention of mine. Yep, they're my three favorites of the franchise. Yes, I know Morgan has had a lot of bad times in the show. But, uh, man, I don't know. The, the legendary status he has. And in my opinion, when you see Morgan, you immediately, like, remember Days Gone By and stuff, which is why I like him a lot. Yep, and not to mention the actor. just Even just Lenny James as an actor just already makes like him one of the best characters. Lenny James, honestly, man, the shit he's had to put up with and the bad writing sometimes he has to deal with, it just makes you know that the guy, it lets you know the guy's loyal, because he's been through a lot of crap, but he sticks through it, man, and he pulls a performance no matter what. Well, I don't know if you guys ever saw that, that interview he had. You guys remember on Talking Dead when they revealed, uh, it was the night they revealed that Morgan was going over to fear the Walking Dead, and you can tell he was actually pissed off in that interview. Like, uh, yeah, we start uh, filming tomorrow morning. He has this, like, angry voice for once that you hear. You can tell he's not a fan. And even on Fear the Walking Dead, he doesn't sit there and pout about it. He does his job. He does the role. Yep, even though you can tell in his, in his head, he's just like, oh, I can't even believe I'm here. In Fear Season 6, though, I bet you Lenny's like, okay, this is more like it. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's well documented that Lenny James hates the writing for Fear Season 5 and 4. Yep, which I completely support. 
He actually wanted to leave Fear and just wanted to leave the Morgan character behind. Which, in my opinion, is why the cliffhanger happened. Was because they're like, okay, if Lenny leaves, we have to kill him. So we'll leave this open-ended. If he wants to leave, we kill him. If he wants to stay, we'll bring him back. Yeah, which is why the cliffhanger is not the worst thing in the world. Because they, they have to still kind of keep it out there. Like, well, if he doesn't want to come back, at least we have this to kind of go by. Well, at least we can off him and there's no more, like... There's no more, like, frickin' conflict with the casting. Like, okay, we don't have to bring him back for a season six death. Yep. Which you think is actually a pretty smart thing. The cliffhanger still sucks, but, you know, it was necessary because Lenny was contemplating leaving. But this shows how loyal he is. He's like, you know what? You know what? I'll stay, and I'll do it, and I'm gonna stick with this. Just think about it. Lenny didn't know Fear Season 6 was going to be this good. He's probably going in thinking the script was going to be ass. But Pleasant Shocker, Season 6, apart from the mid-season finale, has been, well, it's just been awesome. Oh, it's still the best season, regardless of how I feel about the mid-season finale, which we won't get into, obviously, but it's still the best season. Yeah. Hey, Dan, how much does the Lucille bat cost? That's rowdy. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I want to get a bat like that one day too. Um, I'm gonna have to eventually, but yeah. That's my main problem with season ten. Seeing a veteran survivor like Carol, Carol act like an idiot is so frustrating. Yeah, agreed. It's terrible in my opinion what they do to Carol. Yep. Hey, I'm just checking the time. At midnight, I'm gonna cut the stream off, and uh, I'll still be on for party if you're down to talk for a few minutes. Cool. Alright, so we'll wrap the stream up in 15 minutes. Perfect. You can tell Lenny didn't go to fear by choice. Oh, hell no. Lenny didn't want nothing to do with fear, dude. <laughs> nope. You know what would have been amazing? And this is what the cameo originally was like, what the fans were thinking. And I honestly wish they went this route. But a lot of people were thinking that it was going to be Michael Cudlitz as Abraham. And they run into him in Texas with Eugene. And it's still in the past. Could you imagine that? Man, you know, back then I would have said they should have. But then I watched season six of Fear Now and I'm like, ugh, I kind of like the crossover now though. Well, now I like it, yeah. Now I'm saying yeah. But in the same token, uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to talk 608. I want to so bad, but I'm just not going to risk spoiling it for anyone watching who hasn't seen it. I'll just say Morgan just, uh, I'll just say very vaguely, Morgan's not my favorite character in 608, and it's not like a, it's not like a crazy scene or anything, he's just kind of acting a little dumb. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't want to say too much, but it kind of gives me, and don't take this the wrong way, guys, but it gives me season 5 Morgan vibes. Yeah, he's kind of like, not being smart, he's kind of acting a little stupid, but it's not like anything major, it's just kind of like, come on Morgan, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I don't think Morgan's gonna be like that for 6B though. I just think it's a minor 608 thing. And then 6B, it looks like he's back to his like badass ways because you got like the scene at the dam, he's getting ready for a fight. And you damn well know he's gonna kill people at the fight at the dam. Yeah, man, I just hope that we just had a bad episode and now we can continue on with this amazing season. Exactly. Hey, Matt, I've got two Funko Pops of Negan and a replica of Lucille from the comics. That's really cool, dude. That's actually really cool. Like, really good Negan collection. Like, Matt, not gonna lie, I hate Andy and Ian with a burning passion. Their writing, I do. As people, I could care less, but their writing, I despise it, yeah. Oh, as people, I'm not gonna say anything about them, but I'll say as writers, oh, man. That's They're garbage. Topic. They're garbage. Yeah. Dan, any chance we can talk about the lines I need help with after the stream? Uh, unfortunately, uh, I have to get up early for school tomorrow, so it'll probably have to wait until the next day. I know I've pushed it off a little bit, but I'll, uh, I'll message you and I'll update you a little bit, dude. Were you guys working on, like, voice acting or something? Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't know, like, if I should say, because I don't know if Rowdy wants me to kind of... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. 
I get it. Oh, a little secret project. That's pretty cool. Ah, uh, awesome. Um, okay, I was gonna say something. There's something I had on my mind. Oh, yeah, fear. Um, yeah, like I was saying, 6B, honestly, I think it'll be fine. I think it'll still be a great half. We've got the end is the beginning people coming in. We've got the Battle of Lawton in 609, which I do think Ginny is dead in that episode. I think she's gonna die at the battle, if you want my honest oh, yeah. opinion. Because uh, she's nowhere to be seen past the Battle of Lawton. And now that we know the Battle of Lawton was uh, not a big part of uh, 608, right? Now we know that. So we're like, okay, that means that 609 was filmed during COVID. So, like, they had to get her back for that one episode, and that's probably the end of the character, right? Yeah, I know, which I, I guess we kind of assumed wrong. I don't want to go into too much, but, yeah, that's kind of shocking that it's all basically in episode 9. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. I've wanted, I've been wanting a replica of TV Lucille for a while, because that's how much I love Negan. I mean, yeah, if you order one online, I think there might be, um, I'm not sure, though. Me, person, uh, epic. Me, personally, I have all the, uh, Negan essential comics, like, uh, I have, ish I have volume 17, something to fear, uh, here's Negan, and Negan lives, and I always keep those three comics in a special place, because I don't want those getting damaged or anything. You guys know I'm a Walking Dead addict, I have, like, basically everything related to the comics. <laughs> I went a little overboard. Oh, man, I need to get all the comics, though, I've been collecting them, but then when fucking COVID hit, it became really fucking hard. Oh man, um, the deluxe comics, um, I'm just gonna be honest guys, I'm not gonna get them and I don't want them, cause, uh, I don't wanna read something again in color and pay money for it, it's expensive too, isn't it like 15 bucks an issue? No, no, it's only like, uh, I think it's like 6, 7 dollars for each issue, but I'll tell you this, like, the only deluxe comic I'm gonna get going forward, and this will be years to come, but it's when issue 100 releases in color, I'm gonna be getting that one. Oh, something to fear, yeah. You know what's another issue I might actually get to is uh, the one with the final battle at the prison. Agree. Oh, issue 48, that's a... Uh, like, I think I'll get, like, kind of the crucial issues, but not every single one. Well, yeah, because I'm just going to be honest, there's some shit issues in The Walking Dead. I know, well, it's, it's like, if we're talking certain single issues, it's like, you'll read, they're all like 22, 23, 24 pages. It's like certain ones, it's like, man, what really happened in that issue? The prison storyline in the comics is so freaking good. I actually prefer it over the TV storyline, because you have the Rick and Tyrese drama, you have the secret serial killer inside the prison killing people, and, uh, dude, I just freaking love the prison storyline in the comics, and it's so nostalgic, too. Man, you remember when that guy goes after Andrea in the comic with the knife and stuff? And I remember that panel, when you see Rick and he, like, beats him up, and you just have that part where he's looking at his hand and it's all, like, covered in blood and yeah, I was shocked that guy survived that beatdown, man. Oh, man. Comic Rick, though, I'll tell you this. Like, I love TV Rick, but Comic Rick can also be a savage, I feel like, even more so sometimes. Yeah. Volume 15 is my least favorite volume in the comics. I'm trying to remember that volume. It's called We Find Ourselves. It's like the aftermath of uh, No Way Out, where Carl has his knee and stuff. Ah. Uh, okay, yeah, 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 I remember that now. And, uh, yeah, right after Morgan dies and all that. Yep. It's also the one, also, to add, is, uh, it's the, it's the one where you've got, like, Andrea and Rick that hook up for the first time. Oh, honestly, that, honestly, them two together completely smokes, uh, Rick and Michonne together. I'm sorry, Rick and Michonne was never my thing. I just don't think those two had chemistry. No, I'm not a guy to ship relationships, as you guys know, but that one, I actually could, like, I actually really enjoy that relationship in the comics. Yeah, I think it was really good, and, uh, honestly, it's the one fuck-up I'll never forgive the show for, but, holy crap, they ruined Andrea so bad, man. Yeah, not to mention, Andrea's death in the comic, I don't mind how they did it, I just, the whole bite thing kind of, uh... Yeah, it was cheap. I will say, though, and, uh, actually, back to what I was originally talking about at the beginning of the stream, um, here's Negan actually adapted that death, but with Negan and Lucille. 
you have the heartbroken husband who comes in the room, finds her a walker, and can't put her down, and she's a walker in the bed. Like, it's like an exact adaptation, except it's with Negan and Lucille, and it's done so much better with those two, in my opinion. Well, that one makes sense, whereas in the comic, it's just like, whoa, you're messing with, like, the main character here. Well, yeah, not to mention, Andrea, I'm just gonna say, Andrea should have never died in the comics. That character should have lived on. I don't understand why they had to kill Andrea off like that. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Carl loses her and Rick. Like, come on. That'd be the most badass grandma I'd ever <laughs> Straight up. Especially with the sniper, too. Like, holy fuck, dude. Like, honestly, Andrea in the comics was a freaking badass. And honestly, not gonna lie, like a top five comic character, probably. Yep. Oh, man. Honestly, they, literally, I remember when I was doing my video on her a little while back, I'm like, dude, I can't even find that even lost. Well, yeah, exactly. We go to TV, Andrea, and you're just like, okay, this is this is pitiful. Oh God, yeah, don't even get me started on TV, Andrea. It's almost like we got a trade-off. Like Andrea became sucky, but Carol became good. But in the same token, is it a fair trade? Because Carol has not been near the quality of comic Andrea. Not near that quality, in my opinion. Oh, I agree with that. Andrea will always be a better character than Carol, comic-wise. I mean, not TV show-wise. No, TV show-wise, Carol's way better. Than that, yeah. You know what? It's kind of annoying, too, because you have, like, comic Andrea, who's, like, a badass sharpshooter, been through a lot, has a badass scar, too. And then you got TV Andrea, who can't even kill the governor, even though she sleeps with him. Like, how fucking pathetic are you? goes up to him with the knife and she still she knows he's a psychopath at that point and she's still like oh i can't kill him anymore. i'm like fuck dude just do it you know, just don't even like close your eyes and just like just go just do it just act like it's a walker yep exactly yeah, i feel like man you're out on, in the wild with the show for like what eight months you killed a lot of walkers and pretend you're out there killing walkers yeah and then done and then get the fuck out of dodge Because Woodbury will, like, be going after you. But still, at least the main threat is dead. Yeah, oh man, Martinez, yeah, he would, uh, he'd have a fit. Merle would be pleased, though. <laughs> man, well, uh, yeah, around that time, uh, Merle was at the prison, so you'd already be good there. Man, honestly, uh, Merle's death, in my opinion, should have been the big season finale death. Because Andrea, just having Andrea die an episode after is almost like an insult to Merle. Because you have Merle, who has this really bad a death going out in a blaze of glory. And then it's like, oh shit, Andrea just died. No one else died recently or anything like that. Yeah, now, well, not to mention Merle's, like, last episode, this world for life, season 3, episode 15, is a million times better than the finale, like should have been the finale. Yep. I feel like the only reason why they did do it is like, well, we're focusing on Merle, so we can't make that the finale. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you can do that. I will, I'll be fine with that. Not to mention Merle, I'm just gonna say, like, what a freaking great character for the short time he had. Honestly, in my opinion, Merle was Negan before we got Negan. Yep. Not even to mention, dude, that episode, not even just the Merle stuff, just the overall episode. So the Rick speech I remember and like just Michonne, the whole Trey thing, like such a good episode. It was, yeah. Yeah, three fifteen, man. Oh, good freaking episode right there. And you know Negan's or not Negan, uh Merle is fully redeemed when he lets Michonne out of the car. Yeah, well the whole conversation is like, no, we can't go back. Like, Don't you understand that? I can't go back and then it's just like at the last possible moment. And this is why Michonne is so awesome, is that she manages to talk to Merle out of doing something. That's how you know you're good. Yeah, and he lets her go, and he's like, I gotta go and do this alone. Yep. In my opinion, at that point, I knew Merle was dead, because I'm like, yep, yeah, he's going down in a blaze of glory. That's what's gonna happen. He's not gonna survive this. 
Yeah, I, I was literally like watching it and I was nervous and then when he died I'm like, I saw it coming but darn. I was so sad when uh, Daryl had to put him down, I'm like, oh fuck dude. I know, he just keeps pushing him away too until he finally has like enough courage to just do it. Yeah, I was like, I was fucking depressed. I, like, I remember binging through it too because I had... Um, yeah, a little fun fact is, I didn't get caught up to The Walking Dead up until 6.09 was releasing. I got to binge through the first five and a half seasons of the show. So after seeing season three, I, uh, I, I see Merle's death, and I'm like, you know, I'm sad and depressed about it. But I'm like, okay, let's see the season finale. You can understand my disappointment when I flip on the season finale right after, and I'm like, oh man, what an insulting final episode to end this season on. Not to mention, you get that awful season 4 premiere right after. It's like a back-to-back -back pair of crap. Well, think about, think about that, too, dude. Like, we, I literally watched the worst finale, and in my opinion, the worst premiere, and that's the first episode I watched live, 30 days without an action. I bet you, you were kind of sitting there like, do I still want to stick with the show? Like, is it going downhill? Right, but looking back on it, are you a fan still, or do you like it, or no? Oh, I rewatched it like, maybe about a year ago. I haven't watched it any time earlier than that, but like, I'm just like, dude, this is the worst freaking premiere The Walking Dead has ever done. Especially Rick just hanging out with a homeless woman, like, the whole time, like, what? That, and then also, like, I, I did like the part where the zombies are, like, falling off the roof, and you've got, like, the, uh, the one that's, like, hanging by his guts. That's literally probably the best part of the episode, is just the effect. Hey, Matt and Dan, is the main show's third season better than Fear's third season? Oh, big time, yes. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Fear, Fear has a decent plot in season three, but it don't got no Merle or Governor. <laughs> no, that's where it loses. Think about this, you've got Merle and the Governor, and then what do you got in Fear? you got the death of Travis and the death of Troy. Like, really. Not to mention, Troy is the only good thing from Season 3. Yes, I'm going to say this, guys, but without Troy, Season 3 would just be as bad as Season 2, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I, I really liked Walker, of course, and then he just became very anti-climactic by the mid-season finale. Like, <sighs> Not to mention, it's just, they just left him as another Morales. They just don't wrap his character up at all. Nope. Same with uh, uh, Crazy Dog. I could care less about Crazy Dog, though. I don't really understand the hype around that character, but... It's crazy, too, because everyone's like, Ooh, is Walker and Crazy Dog coming back? I'm like, first of all, the guy who plays Walker legit has a terrible beef with AMC, so he'll never return. And Crazy Dog, what's the point of him coming back without Walker? Man, I found it funny when he said during the season 4 airing of Fear that the show is unrecognizable. I'm like, oh man, so true, though. In other words, he called it trash. Alright guys, um, you down to wrap the stream up in like five minutes? Just want to do our final like bit of discussion here? Yeah, sure, dude. Perfect, because uh, I don't want to keep this running too much longer, it's getting late. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was going to say I can only be on for another 30 minutes anyway. Yeah, so we'll cut the stream off in about five minutes guys, and then uh, stay tuned for my fear stream next week. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you, uh, if you guys saw my rant, man, honestly, I, I think I'm gonna even, like, just double up on that on the stream, to be honest. Oh, yeah, once, uh, and don't worry, guys, Fear 608, I will do it the night of. The only reason this stream was delayed to tonight was because I had Fear 608 to watch that night, and I was really busy that night as well. I had a lot of stuff going on. There was no time to do a stream. But don't worry, guys, the night Fear 608 comes out, about after the episode airs, around 10 to 10.30-ish, We'll do a stream and we'll discuss, you know, what we liked and what we didn't like. But, uh, obviously I'm not going to spoil anything, but I'm just telling you guys, like, right out the gate. Uh, it's not a favorite of mine, and, uh, you'll hear why on that stream. I won't go into any further discussion here. Yep. You, got, I mean, you guys already know I, I could not stand it. I 
gave it a 3 out of 10, and I'm not going to really say too much else aside from that, but... Yeah. I mean, it could be boring, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Could just be, like, boring. During Killer Within, where do you think the Fear Crew was? Uh, very hard to predict, because everything that happened in Fear Seasons 3 to 1 was during, uh, Rick being in his coma, so... Yeah, it w it's just hard to say, because we don't even see the Fear Cast again up until, uh, after All Out War at that point, so... Honestly, I can't answer that. <laughs> I don't know. What a big gap right there, though. I think it's terrible design choice-wise. It's like, okay, we gotta make room for Morgan, so yeah, Rick's still in a coma. At ah, skip past All Out War. Like, what? Yeah, it's like you mean to tell me they like just had a peaceful ride to Texas the entire time, and where on earth is Proctor John? Let me add. Proctor John. Oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> Like, where is this man? He's just been there, and honestly, I love the actor, too. I've seen him on a couple shows. He's a good villain actor. That's what he's good at. And honestly, the guy plays a conniving son of a bitch. And it's like, uh, when I saw that guy on Fear, I'm like, oh, shit, they got that dude? Like, all right, we're in for a good frickin' villain. And then season four rolls around. I'm like, Morgan is going to be going up against Proctor John. Let's fucking go. And then we uh, get to the actual show, and I'm like, okay, where is he? Is he the leader of the Vultures? Vultures are gone. I'm like, okay, where the fuck is he? And then we get Martha, and I'm like, okay, Proctor John's not coming back. Great. In season 5, I still held out a tiny piece of hope that he was, because they brought Daniel back. I'm like, okay, so Daniel's back, so they could bring Proctor John back, technically. So then I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. By 508 is when it fully hit me. This guy ain't coming back. No, man, that's terrible that they make you wait, like, all that time to, for you to finally realize it, just because they're so bad at, like, just making characters disappear. Not to mention, uh, they faked us out in Season 5's marketing, trying to make us think Troy was going to come back. They were legit like, oh, Troy could come back. And then they just didn't do it. I'm like, uh, why are you saying lies in your marketing? I felt so bad for the people that were, like, reacting to the Season 5 trailer here. And everybody was like, okay, that's a cool trailer and all, but where's Troy? I'm like, oh, man, Fear the Walking Dead, you done screwed up. Yeah, that is bad. But, uh, I will say... I wasn't expecting Troy. I'm going to be honest. I'm like, nah, he's dead. There's no way they'll bring him back. So they're just saying shit. Daniel, on the other hand, I was excited to see in the trailer. But you know what made up for Troy not being there? It was freaking Dwight's return. When I saw Dwight, and he's like, Morgan. And then uh, Morgan's like, Dwight? I'm like, oh, dude, I got the chills there. Oh, yeah. Well, not to mention that's their first ever scene together with those two actors. So it's like, like, I get Troy not being there kind of sucked, but in return, we did get Dwight back. And Dwight's a better character than Troy, might I add, so... When I saw Dwight, I'm like, okay, this is fine. I'm, I'm cool with this. Yep. Oh, yeah, well, it's like... Also, I remember when I heard Daniel was returning, and, and Troy, I'm just like, alright, Daniel, that's really cool, and then I'm like, Troy? Okay, wait, no, they must have gotten something wrong. Like, cause the guy had a hole in his head. I'm like, nah, that man's dead. He legit... You legit see him get covered in water in the dam flood, like... Troy's done. He, w he would have drowned to death. Yeah, he's dead. And, uh, well, we know one person that loves that. It's the guy from Skybound that absolutely loves that death. Oh, Woody Tondorf? Yeah. Yep. Oh, he freaking replays it in, like, uh, panel to screen all the time. Like, oh, let's replay that one more time. I'm like, dude, this is annoying. Stop. I know. It's like, dude, that was a crazy scene, but it's not that good. Yeah, I mean, you can play any other death, like the governor. That's a satisfying death. <laughs> I know, or how about Morgan, like, Morgan killing Walker Martha? That's kind of satisfying. You know what's a really badass death? In my opinion, it's one of the best deaths of the whole franchise. It was when Emil's like, you couldn't do it then, and you won't do it now. And then he just slams the frickin' axe on his throat and cuts his head right off. Just like, okay, Morgan, like, I remember that was the realization for me. I'm like, okay, Morgan is, like, something else now. I remember, uh, for me, when I fully settled in that he was a different man, is when he delivers that message to Ginny with the head in the box, and then you just see him riding off and getting ready for the battle. And, uh, you just know that you're in for a fucking season after that. Does 
that whole thing with the Morgan Jones is dead, you're dealing with someone else now. His theme like kind of starts and he just rides off like chill, man, honestly. Not to mention you got Jenny that is trying to like look confident, but you can just tell she's terrified. Yeah. In my opinion, the Battle of Lawton, Morgan is going to kill her there. That's my opinion. I don't think she's going to get out of there alive. Especially since we know from trailer footage now that Morgan will be at that battle. Yeah. Oh, you, you literally see her. Like, you see the church and she looks behind her and she's just there on a horse. Like, holy crap. Morgan's not going to let her get away. You know Morgan is going to end Jenny's life there. You know what would be cool, actually, is if uh, he cornered her, and uh, what if all her people are dead or left or something, and Morgan's group left, and it's just like Fear Season 5's ending, where it's just Ginny and Morgan alone, but this time Morgan has the upper hand, and uh, he puts her down. I love that. Oh, you imagine? Maybe it's like everyone leaves, and they just give Morgan his moment or something. <laughs> yeah, imagine... Uh, Daniel gives, uh, Morgan, uh, her gun. He's like, here's the gun, Morgan. <laughs> I know. Oh, that would be so good, dude. I'm just, dude, thinking about that right now, I'm like, okay, that kind of needs to happen. Then imagine Morgan looks at her. She's, like, begging for her life, like how she did with June. Morgan's like, I just resent your face so much. <laughs> And imagine frickin' the- except, you know when Ginny tried to shoot him again and the gun jams, but this time the gun doesn't jam and just gets a bullet right to the face. Oh, if it jammed again, I'd be pissed, but you know darn well, Morgan would be like, alright, let's try that again. If the gun just jams, he just pulls out his scythe and he's like, alright, guess we're doing it this way, then <laughs> done. I know, he's like, nah, dude, this is my moment, and that, like, this night is too perfect, I'm not running it. Exactly. And, uh, alright guys, I think this is going to be where we wrap the stream up. As we are starting to go into the fear topics here, I kind of want to just save a lot of this topic and, you know, a lot of this stuff for the 608 stream. So, yeah, guys, we went over here's Negan, and uh, from what uh, me, Wasteland, and Dan have said, we all love it. It was a great episode, and it's going to be one we watch for years to come, and it'll be settled down as a Walking Dead legendary episode. And yeah, guys, so that is the Here's Negan stream. I hope you all enjoyed it and uh, kind of enjoyed talking about a bunch of these Walking Dead topics, you know, talk about the community, stuff like that. Uh, Rowdy and Epic, I appreciate you guys coming and chilling in the chat and stuff, bringing up some discussion topics. So yeah, guys, um, it was really fun to stream with y'all. I'm going to probably head off to bed in about an hour. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, have a good night, and uh, I'll see you next week for uh, The Door. Alrighty, one sec here.